Ben, what's up? Hi, Dina. I heard you've made one of our company's internal web apps serverless on Google Cloud Platform. Uh, Pete in the ops team said that it's much easier to manage that app now that it's serverless. Oh, yeah. And it was pretty easy to move it. And because it's serverless now, it requires less ops work to keep it going. Oh, good. Uh, so our company's web app for gathering user feedback is starting to get more traffic now that life is returning to normal. Um, and the app went down yesterday and I'm starting to feel overwhelmed by the ops work required to keep it running and restarting it and everything. Uh, could you help me make it serverless? I would love to. Let's do it. All right. I remember hearing about the user feedback web app. We use it to ask our customers questions, right? Yep. And uh, let's see. Here it is. Uh, here's a sample question uh, asking your customers what lollipop flavor we should release next. Oh, gosh. Who's voting for kale? Oh! <laughs> anyway, uh, how does the app work? Uh, so it's a container that runs on a virtual machine, which is backed by a MongoDB database instance in the cloud. Oh, yeah. I remember moving that MongoDB instance to the cloud a couple of years ago. Right. And, and back in 2019, the app got a lot more traffic after our new product hit the stores. Uh, so it crashed. And no one was around to restart the virtual machine. So it remained down for a few days. And we can't have that happen again. Oh my gosh, I remember that. Ugh. Also, aren't you paying for that virtual machine 24 7? Yeah, that's the other thing. Sometimes we get a lot of traffic and the app needs more than one virtual machine. But sometimes no one is using it for days at a time. And we run many virtual machines for this app. One for production, one for staging, a few for development. And it's expensive to pay for all those idle servers or to assign someone to turn them on and off when they aren't needed. Oh, I completely agree. OK. Let's start by determining whether or not your app is a good fit for serverless hosting. And I have a checklist. Oh, that sounds great. OK, item number one. Is your application a web app? Yes, it is. Ah, excellent. OK, item number two. Is your application containerized? Yes, it sure is. Oh, great. OK, item number three. Is the container stateless? That is, it doesn't store user sessions in RAM between requests or anything like that. Uh, yeah, there are no user sessions, or all the user sessions are, are stored in the database. All the data is in the database, nothing in temporary variables or anything like that. Perfect. OK, this sounds like a good fit for Cloud Run because it is a stateless web app in a container. App Engine is a great fit for web apps, but it doesn't use containers. And honestly, this sounds a little too complex for Cloud Functions. Oh, OK. Let's deploy it on Cloud Run then. Yes. The one moment, one note. To be clear, I just want to be clear, the application doesn't have to be in a stateless container right now to move it to Cloud Run, but it would require more steps if it weren't. On the other hand, your use case is very straightforward. So let's do it. Let's deploy your existing container to Cloud Run. OK, uh, let's see. I'm going to Cloud Run here in the console. Uh, I click here to create a new service. I give it a name and a region. Uh, I pick my existing container uh, from the container registry. Uh, OK, so far so good. Uh, but Dina, doesn't the container need to be adapted somehow for Cloud Run? It does. Great question. I've moved a few web apps from virtual machines to Cloud Run, and I've created a short checklist for it. Ah, oh, you really do like checklists, don't you, Dina? Guilty as charged. I love them. OK, here it is. Variables and secrets, connections, security, and trigger. Let's start with the first item. Click Advanced Settings, and then Variables and Secrets. Click Add Variable, and then you just add all the environment variables that your container expects. 
Got it. Uh, so the virtual machine has five environment variables uh, that are used by the container. Yeah, you're just going to copy all of those to Cloud Run, but not the port variable, because Cloud Run does that for you. Uh, OK, uh, give me a minute. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, OK, so uh, what's this uh, secret sections here? If there are some environment variables that are extra sensitive, like passwords, you can put them in Google Cloud's secret manager. That way you get fine grained permissions per secret, audit logs of who reads and writes the secrets, and versioning of the secrets. It's pretty useful. Yeah, that does sound pretty useful. Uh, but I don't want to update the code in my container and retest the container and rebuild the container. Oh, that's OK. You don't have to. If you've already defined these as environment variables in your container, you can use the Cloud Run configuration to expose the secrets from Secret Manager as environment variables. Oh, that sounds great. Uh, I will check that out later. Uh, for now, let's just keep it simple. Uh, I will use these normal environment variables I have here. Sounds good. The next item on my checklist is connections. Does your container connect to any virtual machines in a virtual private cloud or VPC? Uh, yes, it does connect to that MongoDB virtual machine. And that one only has an internal IP address. It's not visible on the external uh, public internet. Got it. OK, so that MongoDB virtual machine sits in a virtual private cloud. When your container was also running on a virtual machine, it was in the VPC, and it could connect to the MongoDB by default. For Cloud Run, we need to add that VPC connection. So you're going to click Connections, then Create a Serverless VPC Connector, then Create Connector. Go ahead and give it a name. Under Subnet, pick Custom IP Range. And then enter that default that they're showing there, 10.8.0.0. Click Create. And the new connector will be available in a minute or two. OK, I did all that. Uh, OK, let's wait for it. OK, once the connector has been created, go back to the Cloud Run page and refresh that list of VPC connectors. Now pick the one that you just created. All right, very good. Done. Uh, OK, so that was number two on your four item uh, checklist. Uh, what's the next one? Ah, the next one is security. OK, well, as you know, Dina, security is important to our company. Uh, how should I set up strong security? You should always use the principle of least privilege. This container should only have the minimum privileges needed to do its job and no more. You could run this container as the default compute engine service account, but that account has more permissions than your container needs. So go to the Security tab and click Create New Service Account. OK. Uh, I see that the system here suggested a name for this new service account. Uh, it looks like it's based on the name of the Cloud Run service. Uh, that's nice. That will make it easy to keep track of things. Uh, I'm clicking Create here. Uh, oh, should I grant it any additional permissions here? Does your container access any other Google Cloud products? Uh, no, it only accesses that MongoDB instance. OK, then there's no need to grant additional permissions. And that's good. This is a good thing. If a coworker of ours accidentally adds code to the container that tries to access any other resource in this project, it will fail. And that is safer for everybody. Yeah, that does feel good. Uh, OK, so far so good. Uh, what's the fourth item on your checklist? It's trigger. So we need to configure how the service is triggered. So go ahead and click that section, and we'll walk through it. OK, done. First, you need to set which networks can access the service. If it's a public web app, you want to pick allow all traffic. OK, so I'm leaving that as it is. Uh, what are the two other radio buttons for, Dina? The second radio button, Allow Internal Traffic and Traffic from Cloud Load Balancing, is for apps that get their traffic from another internal application or via a load balancer. 
You need to put a load balancer in front of your service to use cloud armor for protection or identity aware proxy for authentication. Hmm, got it. Uh, and the third radio button? Oh, that one's useful if your service is an internal microservice that should only be reachable by other services in your project. If you pick that option, your service will not be visible to the public internet. Ah, got it. Uh, let's see, the next section here says authentication. Uh, what should I pick there? Well, this app is public, so you should stick to the first radio button. Ah, OK. <laughs> I'll do that. Uh, but, but what would happen if I picked the second radio button? Well, then only service accounts which have the Cloud Run Invoker permission would be able to trigger your service, and the public wouldn't be able to use it at all. Ah, oh, got it. Uh, is that it? Yes. Click the Create button. Oh, all right. Clicking it now. OK, let's wait for the deployment to finish. All right. It looks like the deployment is done. That was quick. Uh, uh, what now? Cloud Run has given your new service a URL. Do you see it there in the Cloud Console? Uh, oh, there it is. I'm clicking it. And there it is, your existing container running serverlessly in Cloud Run. As a side note, if you wanted a different URL for your service, you could set that up by clicking Custom Domain. Nice. And the application is working. Uh, so to recap, uh, what was your checklist for moving an existing container serverlessly to Cloud Run? OK. First, check what environment variables your container is using and enter them in the Cloud Run user interface. You can also set them from the command line with the gcloud command. For sensitive data, consider putting them in Secret Manager for added security and auditing. And you can still access these values as environment variables, so you won't have to edit the code inside your container. Hmm, OK. Then, if your container accesses servers within a virtual private cloud, like a database, for instance, set up a serverless VPC connector to the VPC where your server lives. Hmm, got it. After that is security. Create a new service account that has the minimum privileges needed to let the container do its job. Configure Cloud Run to use that new service account. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember doing that. And finally, we need to configure how the service is triggered. If it's a public web app, pick Allow All Traffic. If your app gets traffic from the Google Cloud Load Balancer, you'd pick that option. And if your service is an internal-only service that should not be reachable from the public internet, pick the option for that. Excellent. This checklist will make it a lot easier to move other containers to Cloud Run so I don't have to maintain those pesky servers. And you get auto-scaling with Cloud Run. So if the thousands of customers want to vote on our next candy flavor, the container will automatically be deployed to more instances. And bonus, you're not paying for it when it's not in use. That sounds like the best kind of flavor to me. Thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have questions for me or Dina about moving containers to Cloud Run, please let us know in the comments. Also, if you have suggestions for future videos, please enter them below. Bye.